the Lord laid it in my heart to pray for the firstborn. Yesterday, I was in prayers and the Lord said to me, even before you minister today, I want you to redeem every firstborn. Look at all the heretic teachings on firstborn. First, can you imagine that you are very stupid to believe that you are suffering because you are firstborn? You are very stupid to believe it. But why do you believe in such stupidity? Because you have listened to nonsense for too long. Now you've lost your common sense. There is something called the travails of the firstborn. If you're here and you are a firstborn, lift up your hand. You are suffering because you are firstborn. Yeah. Ha! Zombie. Yeah. Because the devil is after our firstborns. Hallelujah. You forgot that Jesus was firstborn. He didn't suffer. Every demonic power yes. that has been fighting the destiny of your firstborn oh, yes. right from the womb. I declare catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Hmm? Solomon was firstborn of his mother. He was the richest. How many curses did they break in his life? To hold a seed in your hand if you are a firstborn or if you have a firstborn why do we have this nonsense all these contraptions we call churches hold a seed i want to speak a word over that seed it's so sad that sometimes when we scream about abominations like this some people don't see anything wrong with it concerning the firstborns even those that are watching me live only in a mortuary that this corpse don't see anything wrong with this corpse lying dead. I want you to give whatever God lays in your heart. It is a seed of redeeming yourself as a firstborn or your firstborn brother, your firstborn sister, your firstborn child. The kind of shame that we are bringing on the body of Christ, those of us that call ourselves pastors, is crazy. This is by revelation. Every apostolic and prophetic voice should not allow certain things to go like that without pointing direction to the body of Christ. What others did not accomplish in your family, you will accomplish. Paul in his days would not let such nonsense go without addressing them. The Bible says, gather my people together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. God, what nonsense. Eh? Hey! Beginning today, as you are laying your sacrifice on this altar, your story will change. Why the deception? As you lay your sacrifice on this altar, I break off the curses in your bloodline. Divine speed is coming to you now. That is a mortuary, my friend. <laughs> no. It's not a church. As the firstborn, Rabba Kadoshka. So the village kept sacrificing to the oracle. Receive divine speed. Rabba Kadoshka. You commit your life to a preacher who is a quack. I lose you from inherited curses and evil covenants. You expect him to carry a surgical operation in your heart. It's not possible. Sacrifice is what touches you. Sacrifice is what moves you. That is why people are bleeding to death. To make matter worse, we are blaming the problem on ancestral causes. Ancestral foundations, evil altar. We blame the devil for what quacks are doing. If it does not inconvenience you, it is not a sacrifice. If it does not touch you, it is not a sacrifice. Rabakadoshka, Rabakadoshka. All the French, uh, Germany, Greek, and all these things that you speak. The same spirit, the same devils. And when we talk, Zumbi will say, touch not my anointed. Leave men of God aside. They are no men of God, they are men of dogs. Because a man of God will not bring shame to the living God. I want you to come and declare, just as you drop it on a sema, redeeming the firstborn, just drop it. We'll begin with that side. If we are not radical, if we don't carry the spirit of a warrior, we can't save people this end time. If you are fearful, you can't save people this end time. Is somebody hearing me? If you are afraid to call names, then you cannot save people this end time. Because the warriors of darkness, they call names, they are deliberate, they are intentional in whatever they are doing. Do not think I don't want to offend them. If you don't offend them, you cannot save the people. Are you hearing me? You have to remove that from your mind and be the warrior of righteousness that you are called to be. 
Even the psalmist said, Here, yeah, people cannot be cooked for hell. And we keep quiet. I thank you for everyone that has given a seed for redeeming the first fall. Even those that are watching us from around the world. The reason why they were able to gather all this crowd in their churches is because men are gullible. They are not looking for eternal life. Because if you are looking for eternal life, you will know when a preacher cannot deliver it to you. Father, it was by divine instruction. You told me the time has come to rewrite the histories of our family. This is time for exposure of what is evil. You told me that time has come to silence the voice of history in our family. Hypocrisy is the breeding ground for false prophets, heretic teachers, and people that God did not even call. We just mounted the pulpit with microphones and with all the money. And God said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they run. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. What is giving them the power to run? Of course, the Antichrist. You told me the witchcraft altars that were raised, it is not easy. The time has come for those altars to be destroyed. It's my prayer that God would tear the body of Christ from this nonsense that we call church. Remove this covering of corruption that is destroying the image of Jesus Christ and making the people not to know that there is still heaven. There is still hell. There is still a people of God on the face of the earth. Are you understanding me? There is work to do. Religion.